I'm thinking this evening about guidance and uh, everything that the book of Proverbs says about that. And uh, are you the kind of person that is good at asking for guidance, generally in life? Um, not necessarily a bit of help because you're a little bit lost and you need some directions, but you don't really want to ask for directions. You want to find your way. I'm the worst in supermarkets. Um, I like the kind of shopping where um, you just go up and down the aisles very systematically, and as you see things, you go, yeah, I need some of that, pop it in. The worst thing is if my wife, Tree, gives me a shopping list, and it might only have four or five things on it, they will always be slightly obscure things that I need to go to the big Sainsbury's for, and all impossible to find. You know, they'll all be the odd things that will be on one of those sort of end of row displays rather than somewhere sensible. And I will walk up and down and up and down and up and down thinking, I don't want to ask anyone, I don't want to ask anyone, I'm just going to find this stupid thing. She would be able to do it, why can't I find this thing? Uh, so that's me. Um, and maybe, maybe some Christians in relation to God as well, in relation to the guidance that might be available from God or from others. Maybe for some of us, there's something in your heart that, that is a bit resistant to seeking advice, seeking help. I want to make my own choices. I don't want to be controlled. I don't want to be constrained. I don't want to consult particularly. I want to just go with what I think is right and do my thinking for myself. Even maybe the biggest decisions in life. Um, who am I going to start a relationship with? Uh, maybe I'm moving to a new job or a new town. Uh, maybe our instinct with those big, big, big decisions is, I'd rather just control my destiny, thank you very much. I don't really want anyone else, be it other people or even God, uh, giving me direction. Others can be obsessed with guidance and seek it all the time. You come across uh, some Christians, I think, who will do nothing unless they have a very specific word from the Lord about that situation. So you're in bed in the morning. Shall I get up? Lord, is now the time? Open the sock drawer. Hang on a minute. Lord, the pink ones, the blue ones. It takes a very long time to go about your day if uh, that is uh, you. That is a caricature, but something of that uh, can happen, I think. Uh, if we can get paralyzed and think, well, unless, I've, unless I know a, a very direct word about just about everything, um, I shouldn't take any steps forward in life. So let's think about this uh, in the book of Proverbs. I'm going to say at the beginning, we need guidance whether we know it or not. And uh, the book of Proverbs begins with uh, uh, a lot about why we need the wisdom in Proverbs. It is wise to listen. It's a very simple point in that first verse. Let the wise listen and add to their learning. Uh, the contrast is between wise and foolish. It is foolish not to listen. It is wise to listen. Let the discerning get guidance. And that second verse, buy the truth and do not sell it, we should be more interested in gaining guidance, gaining wisdom, than in trying to present ourselves as givers of guidance. We won't be any use as givers of guidance unless we've received it first, unless we've gained wisdom from the Lord. So the basic stance that Proverbs would encourage us to have in relation to guidance is one of listening, to being open to learning, to being shown what is the right thing to do. It's a stance of humility, of being teachable, of recognizing that we don't know everything, that we're not on our own necessarily able to wisely assess a situation without help, uh, that we often lack the guidance we need, even sometimes just the information we need. So that we should seek it. Uh, that is the attitude that underpins the seeking of guidance. Uh, listening, humility. So what does Proverbs tell us about guidance? We're going to talk about the guidance of God, the guidance of others, and the guidance of our own heart, and then a couple of questions at the end. 
Um, so first of all, the guidance of God. This, this clearly is the, the sort of big one that Proverbs wants to point us to. So, so thanks for uh, reading those verses there. Trust, trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways submit to him and he will make the, your path straight. My son, do not despise the Lord's discipline and do not resent his rebuke because the Lord disciplines those he loves as a father the son he delights in. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom and knowledge of the Holy One is understanding. Every word of God is flawless. He is a shield to those who take refuge in him. Brilliant, thank you. So you see that basic stance of listening, of humility, of seeking help in relation, first of all, to God himself. Trust the Lord with all your heart. Trust him. Trust what he thinks and says about the issues of your life. And lean, lean not on on your own understanding. I mean, I guess the, the picture is of something that's liable to giving way. If I'm trying to lean on my own understanding, then that, that understanding is not infallible. It might crumble. But the Lord, the Lord can be lent on in every situation. His understanding of things is always perfect. Uh, Tree and I, on Friday evening, watched a, a slightly comedic documentary about um, flat earth believers. Now, I don't know everyone in the room and your opinion about the shape of the earth. I'm sorry, but I'm going to assume the earth is a globe. Um, Watching this documentary was really funny because uh, these flat earth guys um, were so unbelievably convinced of their view. And every time any information was presented to them, any evidence was presented to them, very clear evidence of the earth being a globe rather than flat, um, they, they just found ways to duck it and deny it. And one of the ways that they, they would do that was um, uh, to just assume that everybody who thought the Earth was a globe had been um, infected by a conspiracy and that everybody was out to just sort of mislead about the Earth being the wrong shape. And you sort of think, well, I don't know why would anyone want to do that and why would they... Anyway, uh, very, very strange. And you ask these guys... Um, why are there no scientists and no professors of any discipline whatsoever who hold your view? And they say, well, they can't be. Because by definition, uh, somebody who's in a, position, in a post as a scientist or a, a professor of anything is compromised. They're part of the state system. They've been infected by this views. They've been controlled. <sighs> so there, there is no openness There's no willingness to listen. There's no willingness to subject the view to scrutiny. There was a a moment of almost enlightenment. Um, uh, One of the the sort of leaders of of the movement was being interviewed as she drove along in the car. And she'd fallen out with a load of others within the movement. And they'd started to to speak against her. And um, they were saying all sorts of ridiculous conspiratorial things about her. Things like, well, she obviously works for the CIA because her name's Patricia. And the last three letters of her name are CIA. And she was driving this car going, this is ridiculous. I can see this is ridiculous. They're so (laughs) closed-minded. And then for a moment she said, what if I'm like that? What if my whole belief system is really closed-minded? And then she looked at the camera and said, but I know it's not. And you think, gosh, that, that, that is desperately sad, isn't it? Um, we need to be those who recognize that the Lord knows more than we do. There are lots of voices in the world that will tell you to write off the views of the Lord because, well... Isn't, isn't that organized religion? Isn't that trying to control you? Isn't that uh, just believing in a, a book? All, all those kind of uh, push God's voice away kind of arguments. But actually, if there is a living Lord who's made everything, including you, including everything in the world, uh, then he knows better than we do how we should live. And so we need to listen to him. We need to start with God. 
as uh, this, uh, chapter 9, verse 10 says, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom, and knowledge of the Holy One is understanding. But just back up to the, the verse before, because listening to God's guidance may not always be pleasant. It talks about the Lord's discipline and his rebuke. It's not nice to be corrected, is it? If you've held or uh, uh, proclaimed something uh, and, and told lots of people about a view and then you discover that it's wrong or somebody tells you that it's wrong, that's not pleasant. It's not nice. Or if you've made choices and gone quite a long way down the line of those choices and then somebody tries to rebuke or pull you back or persuade you that those choices were not the right thing, that is very, very hard. Um, our, our desires will often resist the guidance of God. It's hard to be turned around from a course that we've become very settled in. But it does say the Lord disciplines those he loves as a father he delights in. You're not going to improve the situation by continuing to believe something that is wrong. You're not going to improve your choices or circumstances in life by continuing down a wrong path when someone, God himself, has started to enlighten you uh, that you might be wrong. How does God guide? Well, in all sorts of ways, but at the very end of those uh, verses there is uh, chapter 30, verse 5. Every word of God is flawless. He is a shield to those who take refuge in him. God's words. We've got a, a book here full of God's words, a thousand and some pages of God's words that are flawless. So you might think of all sorts of other ways of God guiding, but the first thing to, to say in terms of what is definitely guidance from God are his words in Scripture. They are flawless. We can trust everything he has said, everything God says about relationships and good and bad choices in life, in Scripture, uh, are things that we should listen to and be guided by. What about other things? What about um, God guiding us through things like signs or um, desires within ourselves or dreams and visions and prophecy, those kind of things? Absolutely, uh, God can do those things. Absolutely, God can guide through all sorts of ways, what, however he chooses to. Um, and it's important to acknowledge that. It's important to be open to God guiding us through whatever ways he might choose. The important thing to say about um, all of those kinds of guidance outside the Bible is that we can't say the same thing about them being necessarily flawless. So think about being guided by my desires. Uh, I might very strongly desire something, but where is that desire coming from? Is that a good desire? Is that a sinful, selfish desire? I need more information to discern between those two things. I need to go to God's word in scripture to help me understand that. Think about signs. Um, signs can be misinterpreted and uh, can be very confusing. Uh, so think about somebody who's, I don't know, trying to choose which university to go to. Should I go to York University? Should I go to Edinburgh University? And uh, maybe this person spends several weeks just encountering Scottish person after Scottish person after Scottish person who randomly keeps telling them what a lovely place Edinburgh is. And they think, well, this must be a sign. God must be leading me to Edinburgh by, by bringing all these Scottish people from Edinburgh into my path. But what if, what if that's a temptation? What if hearing about how lovely Edinburgh is and how tuneful and beautiful the Scottish accent is, is, uh, is actually uh, enticing me from, from my sort of self-comfort and, and sinful desires and I should go to the one that, that doesn't feel so enticing? See what I mean? So signs can sometimes work both ways. And we need the Lord's word to shed light on uh, what we should really be thinking about in big decisions like that. Dreams, visions, prophecy. Yes, God can do those things. But uh, scripture is really clear that um, prophecies need to be tested, weighed and tested by scripture. Um, so all these other ways of God uh, guiding us uh, 
be very important, very open to God leading in all sorts of ways. But always remember where the ultimate authority lies. Always remember uh, how we can test those other possible ways of God guiding us. So there's a few words on the guidance of God. Let's move on to the guidance of others. Starting with, uh, Proverbs says a lot about guidance from parents. So I'm going to say a few things about that. So could we hear those verses, please? My son, keep your father's command and do not forsake your mother's teaching. Bind them always on your heart. Fasten them around your neck. When you walk, they will guide you. When you sleep, they will watch over you. When you awake, they will speak to you. Start children off the way they should go. Even when they are old, they will not turn from it. Given us not just himself, but others. And some of the ways he guides us are through other people that he's brought into our lives. And um, parents. Now, parents, in this room, there will be a, a variety of experiences of parents. I want to acknowledge that. Um, not all good, not all perfect, certainly none perfect. Almost all of us will have learned some good things from our parents, some wisdom and guidance from parents. Actually, it's fascinating to meet people's parents. We can't often meet people's parents uh, who sort of visit for a weekend and pop into church. And uh, it is really interesting because you, you, you chat to somebody's parents and you think, huh, this person now makes a lot more sense to me. Uh, and you, you can often see that the way this person has lived their life is uh, in large part either going along with advice or guidance or characteristics of their parents or in reaction to uh, characteristics or advice or guidance given by parents. Um, we're, we're all a lot more like our parents or uh, steered negatively by our parents than we often think. Now that we've got children, uh, we find ourselves often saying something to our kids and then thinking, ha, huh, where did that come from? I remember my mum or my dad saying that to me. I'm becoming my dad, or whatever it might be. And in all sorts of hidden ways that we didn't realize, the, 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 the bringing up, the ethical values, the, the way our parents dealt with us, becomes part of our mindset, becomes part of our, our, our sort of ethics, the way we think life should be done. And in many, many, many ways, hopefully, that is for the good. That is a gift of God. Um, whatever good has come your way from your parents is a great, great, great gift of God. Even today, um, if your parents are around, uh, do you call them for advice? Um, I understand there's complications with that and you know, there may be, may be reasons for, for not doing that uh, for some. But for many, wouldn't it be a great thing to pick up the phone? You're facing a decision. Pick up the phone. Chat to mum or dad. Um, talk to them about uh, what you're going through. A, they'd probably love it. <laughs> and B, you might be wonderfully surprised by some of the wisdom, the experience that they can pass on to you. Now, of course, that's not on the level of God's uh, direct guidance and advice in Scripture. Uh, but there might be lots that the Lord brings to you through uh, your parents. That last verse in that little section, 22 verse 6, start children off on the way they should go, and even when they're old, they will not turn from it. Do you think that's true? I see some shaking heads. Um, Remember how the book of Proverbs works. I mean, wouldn't it be wonderful if this was true? You know, say the right things to your kids and they will be absolutely brilliant throughout their lives. Um, Proverbs are, are not law, neither are they promise. They are observations of what is typically the case in life. And so, I think what we need to see from this verse is that it's typically true, more often than not it is true, that uh, when a child has good parents and good influence on them as uh, a young person, they're more likely uh, to go down the right paths as they grow up. Um, as soon as we've said that, we've got to say, well, my goodness, there's a lot of exceptions to that. 
lots and lots and lots of exceptions. Um, but it is an assurance here to uh, parents, those who are parents, those who might become parents one day. Um, God, God uses your influence in your children's lives in a very, very, very wonderful and positive way. Um, uh, trust him, look to him, seek his guidance. Know that it might, always, might not always work out the way this uh, verse describes. Um, but there is so much that we can do to help um, our kids to grow up in the right ways. Complex stuff, complex to work through. It's a complex world. Our hearts are complex. Our children's hearts are very, very complex. Um, but God gives us parents, and the guidance of parents is very significant. Uh, teachers, advisors, and friends. Um, Joe, thanks. Could you read those next ones, please? You will say how I hated discipline, how my heart spurned correction. I would not obey my teachers or turn my ear to m- to my instructors, and I was soon in serious trouble. For lack of guidance, a nation falls, but victory is won through many advisers. The way of fools seems right to them, but the wise listen to advice. The righteous choose their friends carefully, but the way of the wicked leads them astray. Plans fail for lack of counsel, but with many advisers they succeed. Listen to advice and accept discipline, and at the end you will be counted among the wise. Perfume and incense bring joy to the heart, and the pleasantness of a friend springs from their heartfelt advice. So not just family, but lots and lots of different people in different seasons of life that the Lord might put alongside you uh, to help you, to give you guidance. Uh, Lots about teachers there, not good to spurn the discipline and correction of teachers that can get you in serious trouble Um, lots about advisors in general about how uh, even a nation if if advice is not sought if there isn't a a a government that is willing to listen and take advice from experts and from for those who who know things uh, then a nation will fall Uh, and then uh, 1522 plans fail for lack of counsel but with many advisors, they succeed. Uh, to make serious plans about something, but not take advice, um, that, that can be disastrous. Um, it's often easy to avoid this. Again, if we're the kind of person that thinks, I, I don't really want to take advice, I want to just decide for myself, I want to think everything through, trust my own thought processes, and make my choices without help. Um, Well, God has given us each other. God has given us very different personalities and characters and gifts. Uh, My wife, Tree, and I, in lots of ways, are quite different from each other. Um, I tend to sort of uh, endlessly think things through. Tree tends to be very, very practical. And so um, I very often am enormously helped if I've got some situation that uh, I I can't find my way out of and I'm trying to think it through, I will just get stuck in a cycle of thinking and I'll mention it to Tree and she immediately, without thinking sometimes, will say, well, why don't you do this? And often my instinctive reaction is, well, you don't understand, it's too, it's more more complicated than that. But sometimes I then think, oh, actually, you're right. (laughs) And I just, I'm just resisting doing something and yes, I need to do that. Thanks, darling. Uh, but it's a, it's a great partnership, and we all need people who are different from one another. We all need people who can give us a different perspective, a different approach, a different character, uh, different uh, ideas. Uh, friends are mentioned a number of times here uh, in terms of their advice. 1226, the righteous choose their friends carefully, but the way of the wicked leads them astray. And the last verse, perfume and incense bring joy to the heart and the pleasantness of a friend springs from their heartfelt advice. Um, Choose wisely uh, the people that you have as trusted friends that you take guidance and advice from. Choose wisely, but also go to them for help. You know, don't just have friends that will be buddies for fun, um, that's great. 
but choose friends that will look after you and will want to help you in the hard circumstances of life. Um, even with things like uh, relationships, uh, starting relationship. I remember when uh, Tree and I uh, knew each other as friends and we were wondering about whether to sort of be more than that. Uh, we had a, several friends who knew both of us and were able to sort of in private conversations say some helpful things. There was one friend who said some really unhelpful things, but that's fine. We ignored him. Um, uh, but there we go. Uh, good friends who, who know you and know your situation can be a wonderful help in God's hands. I remember a friend who uh, came to me to tell me that he was really struggling. He was, he was, this is a long time ago, far away from St. Michael's, nobody that you know. Uh, somebody who um, was married with children, but really attracted to somebody else and in serious danger of starting an affair and um, desperately wanted to talk it over. And I'm so glad he did. I'm so glad he came and talked about it because we were able to work through it and we were able to, to talk about the temptations he was facing and what he could put in place to make sure he wasn't getting into that, that difficulty and how he could put boundaries. And uh, wonderfully, he did the right thing and uh, that danger was averted. Um, but we need friends. We need friends who will get in there and help us, especially in the tough times. So... Guidance of others, parents, teachers, advisors, friends. What about the guidance of your own heart? This is our, our, our last main point. Uh, Joe, let's hear those faces, please. Thank you. The integrity of the upright guides them, but the unfaithful are destroyed by their duplicity. Righteousness guards the person of integrity, but wickedness overthrows the sinner. Apply your heart to instruction and your ears to words of knowledge. Thank you so much. You will all know that uh, the mantra of today is follow your heart. That is the thing we're all supposed to do. The thing we're meant to be guided by more than anything else is our own heart, our own desires, our own feelings. What do you think of that? If my friend who was tempted to have an affair had at that point followed his heart, that would have led to absolute disaster and destruction. Um, follow your heart is just way, way, way too simplistic a thing to say. Our heart won't always mislead us and say bad things, but sometimes it does. Um, so these verses are very, very, very helpful. What is it in our hearts that can guide us rightly? Well, 11 verse 3, the integrity of the upright guides them. And at 13 verse 6, righteousness guards the person of integrity. So we need to know that there is sin in our hearts. There are selfish desires. Great care is needed. We can't just say follow our hearts. But to the extent that we are seeking to live with integrity and righteousness, in other words, a good conscience, if within your heart, working through a big decision, and you've done lots of thinking about it, you've taken advice from, from, from the Lord, from others, and as far as you can tell, you've got a good conscience on an issue, um, that's a good sign. That is a good sign. Um, people talk about a, having a sense of peace about a decision. Well, that's a little bit like following your heart. That can be dangerous. What do you mean by having a sense of peace? Um, I have a sense of peace about having this affair. Well, no. <laughs> no. But if you've worked through it in terms of God's advice and listened to what he has said, and about a decision you're facing, you have a good and clear conscience. And as far as you can tell, having listened to God and listened to others, it seems right. And your heart has a, a, a sense of settled conscience about it. Then that is important. And that can be a, a, a really good indication and a way that the Lord can help to lead us. In order to do this... We need to pay attention to the last verse there, 23 verse 12. Apply your heart to instruction and your ears to words of knowledge. In other words, 
Train your heart. If you want to be able to follow your heart in the sense of having a good conscience about things, having integrity about things, because you've listened to the Lord and you're following his guidance and you can begin to trust your instincts a little bit more, well, you need to train your heart. You need to hone our instincts. We need to feed our hearts on God's word more and more and more and more and more so that God's guidance takes root and is at home in our hearts so that what our hearts tell us is increasingly shaped by God's word. So be here on Sundays. Get yourself into your home groups. Get yourself into the Bible because that will enable your heart to guide you in surer and surer ways. So, some things that Proverbs says about guidance. The guidance of God, the guidance of others, the guidance of your own heart. Just finally, a couple of questions that might be bubbling up. That uh, There are also some verses in Proverbs that help with. One is, what if you ask God for guidance, but he seems silent? Uh, so, you've got a hard choice, and you don't know what to do. Uh, maybe it is one of those big choices, where to go to university or whether to accept a new job that will take you away uh, from, from where you're living or whether you should start a relationship with a certain person. Um, what should we do if we want something from God that tells us one or the other, a yes or a no or Edinburgh or York or whatever it is, and there doesn't seem to be an answer forthcoming? What should we do? Well, I guess, first of all, we need to ask, have we made the most of all the guidance the Lord does give in the Bible and through friends, uh, through family, uh, through advisors? Uh, Make the most of that. Think through, are there biblical principles that might give me a steer on this? Um, Is there somebody who I can chat to, who knows me well, who can sort of just help me assess my my thoughts, my, my decisions on this? But what if you've done all that and still there's no clear right or wrong? Edinburgh or York, is one of them really godly and the other one really ungodly? Or this person that uh, I'd like to go out with, would it be a godly thing to go out with them or, or a godly thing to not? Well, at that point, if you've sought guidance, if you've prayed and there doesn't seem to be um, a clear right or wrong, but in, in one, uh, both, both choices, as far as you can see, could be right and good. Well, God has, made, God has made us free. God has given us a mind to choose. We are wonderfully made with real choices. Sometimes I think people have a huge fear of stepping outside of God's will. If I make the wrong choice here, um, am I going to sort of divert from God's will and never be able to get back into it? God doesn't want us to think like that and feel trapped like that. So in that kind of situation, you can pray through it, you can seek advice, and then prayerfully, in good conscience, you choose. Entrust yourself to God and you choose. And this verse here is a wonderful reassurance because it says God will be with you in that. So 16 verse 9, In their hearts humans plan their course, but the Lord establishes their steps. God will be with you. Um, If you make a choice in good conscience, uh, he will be with you, and he will guide and steer through the circumstances of life. Um, Final question. What if you've ignored God's guidance and you've made bad choices and you've woken up to that? What should you do? Well, this is a lovely verse. Whoever conceals their sins does not prosper, There's no point carrying, going on the the wrong way. There's no point just covering that up and and trying to ignore it. It won't make things any better. But the one who confesses and renounces them finds mercy. With the Lord, there is mercy. With the Lord, there is always a way back. And that way back is always Jesus. The way back from Jesus our wrong choices. Every single one of us in this room will, in different ways, at different times, in, in, in different circumstances, have made wrong choices and gone against God's guidance. But no matter how far you've wandered, Jesus invites you back. No matter how badly 
you've ignored God's guidance, uh, you can come to Jesus, you can receive his forgiveness, and your life can be back on track the way it should be. You can live by God's guidance again, or maybe for the first time, you can come to him and be steered. And right at the bottom, I've, I've just put a New Testament verse that points us to Jesus and all of the guidance and the wisdom that is in him. This is the Apostle Paul writing about uh, Christians and what he wants for them. He says, my goal is that they may be encouraged in heart and united in love so that they may have the full riches of complete understanding in order that they may know the mystery of God, namely Christ, in whom are hidden all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge. Jesus is the one to go to, always. Always for salvation and always for wisdom and knowledge and the guidance that you need for your life. Let me pray and then we're going to respond in song. Let's pray together. Lord, please guide us in life. We really need your guidance. We so often go wrong and we often don't notice within our hearts the, the selfishness that is there in big ways or, or just small ways. And Lord, we need you to steer us. We need words of truth and love from you. And so, Lord, help us to devote ourselves to all that you say in the Bible. Help us to be ready to listen to everything that you have for us. Please guide us through friends, through family. Please guide us, uh, Lord, if you choose to do so, through signs and dreams and visions. But help us, Father, to always test everything that everyone says to us, everything that we think might be from you, by your word that we know is absolutely from you, that is flawless. Thank you for the guidance of Scripture. May we ever trust in it and be led down paths of righteousness. In Jesus' name. Amen.